care about how hot the water is. I don't care if he used bleach. That is unsanitary and that is nasty. And if you're going to do it, don't do it on TV, bro. Just, just don't. It's me, Miss Joan TV. I'm back, and today we will be discussing one of my favorite shows that I've been watching over a year and a half, which is Love After Lockup. So let's get into it. Okay, so with this new season of Love After Lockup, we're now introduced to five new couples, which are Stan and Lisa, Courtney and Josh. Deontay and Nicole, Rachel and Doug, and Brittany and Ray. And pretty much the show starts off with two of our couples who are Deontay and Nicole. So we start off with Deontay who is walking into a wine store. He's pretty much looking for wine to buy for his girl Nicole who, who is currently locked up in jail. So Deontay states that he's like this hopeless romantic and he's really a nice guy but he forgot to mention that he's very like naive and simple minded. So he pretty much first starts off on how like he met Nicole and that Nicole has been pretty much incarcerated for the last four years. For, I believe for robbery so pretty much um, he's saying how he doesn't like materialistic women and that he really thinks like she's the one but then Nicole calls pretty much and the first thing she's like oh what you doing he's like I'm at the wine store and she's like where's my money bitch better have my money okay pretty much that's what she said so we learned that Nicole is getting out in two days and that he's actually thinking about getting engaged to this girl okay right so if that is not enough being said i don't know what is so is it me or is like this dude is a little creepy to me he's like really nerdy creepy it's something about him that just creeps me out but i think his story is probably going to be like the most dramatic really right so he then goes to home right this is after the whole wine shopping and he brings out a sex torso which is a toy that men use to pleasure themselves. But it was very disturbing. And see, I got the creepy vibe from him before that. So when I saw that, I said, creepiness confirmed. And then he had the audacity, honey, to sit here and put it in his dishwasher. Come here. Deontay's family. Don't eat at his house. Don't eat off his utensils or plates. I'm telling you, I don't care about how hot the water is. I don't care if he used bleach. That is unsanitary and that is nasty. And if you're going to do it, don't do it on TV, bro. Just, just don't. Okay? So, he mentions about his size, right? Well, rumor is people who's a little mentally challenged tend to have big. So, he may be right. I don't know. But I'm, I'm really, he's just... It's not all the way there, clearly. And this is like right off the bat. You could just tell. So as he's sitting there and he's showing off all the stuff that he bought her, his friend shows. And his friend name is Derek. He shows up and he's pretty much going in on him. Like, bro, what is your problem? Like, you're spending money on someone who hasn't even, like, you haven't even met or really spent time with. So we find out he buys her a Michael K watch. He has an envelope for like a thousand dollars in it. She has an iPhone, um, Air was an AirPod, so he pretty much didn't spend a couple stacks on this girl right off the bat, okay? Okay, so he pretty much, front even said it, like, he looks like a sucker. He don't look, he is, okay? You are, he's sorry, you are a sucker, okay? And trust me, you're going to learn the hard way with this one. So then, his friend is pretty much like, bro, what is you doing? You know, come on, let's get it together. And he's like, well, you know, I mean, $24 an hour. Pause. That says more. And, and, you know, we learned later on in this episode, he's an ex-Marine. So, I'm trying to understand. I, I would think he had more sense. But maybe he lost it in the Marines. Because I'm not understanding how, honey, ex-Marine making $24 an hour. We pretty much have money. But yet, you, you, you meeting women off. Okay. So, pretty much his friends call him a dumbass. And can I disagree? No. So then we fast forward with Deontay 
where he goes to meet with his mother. So that's when we learn he's a Marine. His mother is not beat. Like, she's not feeling the cold. She doesn't even want to meet Nicole. She's just, like, not feeling the cold. So he, as he's sitting there and he's having dinner with his mom and his brother, he's talking about there's going to be ground rules, right? But then we come to learn that this fool, previous girlfriend, was an ex-convict and took him for everything. 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 Okay. Took him for everything. Wiped him out. He had to move in back with his mother. He lost his car. Everything, honey. He had to start over from scratch. And then he took his ass back on the same website and met another Becky a convict Becky and the thing that blew me the most two things but the thing one of the things that blew me the most was the fact <laughs> that the girl Nicole told him right off the bat initially she was on there looking for somebody with some money but she but he was special he's special all right oh he's special short bus special you gotta be you gotta be then we go to learn that when the mother asks well how much did you spend on this girl already and this fool says 20 to 30 thou houseway how where what on commissary on commissary i don't believe it i don't believe it 20 thou 30 thou on commissary so pretty much, we know we not crazy because even his own mama is like, he don't get it. He's not getting it. And this is when, as a parent, and I'm a parent, you realize that your kid may be a little off. And I think she's just now seeing that. And so pretty much that's the story of Deontay and Nicole so far in episode one. So next couple, then we meet our next couple, which is Brittany and Ray. So right off the back, I'm getting like Chevelle vibes, only in the sense that she's pretty much expecting this man to marry her as soon as he get out. Girl, you can't tell me you didn't watch the last episode, the last season and bring your ass on this show. But we're going too far. So Brittany comes from like a high class family or upper class family, black family that does very well for, her, for themselves. So pretty much she was raised to carry herself in a certain way, very pretty much you know very classy very um opulent you know she has opulence all of this right but yet she's with ray so pretty much britney and ray meet each other on facebook and then that's when she learns he locked up we also learned that ray has been arrested for four years for drug selling for for selling drugs so pretty much he's a dope boy as she's in the store and she's buying clothes so she can have you looking sexy for ray when he gets out her friends come to the store and they're talking to her and discussing how did she discuss this with her family. We learned that her family does not know that she's been dating this man for nine months, okay? And I can see why. Uh, we also learned that she had a past relationship where I believe she was engaged and her ex of three years was physically abusive and it traumatized the whole family, huh? And even Brittany says herself that she knows that once she tells her mother that she's with this guy, Ray, who's incarcerated, they're still going to say they're traumatized from the situation with her last ex. Here's my thing. If you just got finished dealing with a man who just, I, I mean, I don't judge people who's in jail. Trust me, I don't. I'm not in a position to judge or criticize any person who's ever been arrested or in jail. Here's the thing, though. When do we learn, sis? When do we learn? Brittany's pretty um, concerned that her family won't be supportive of her decision of being with Ray. But why would they be? I mean, my family may not come from an upper, upper class, but boo, I, I get why they would not agree. Why would they want their daughter, their sister, their cousin, whomever you are to your family to stoop? Like, girl, you t I mean, look, okay, straight, narrow guys who do very well for themselves, they can come off a little corny. But girl, at this point, at your age, it's about stability. Like, girl, you're supposed to get this out your system in, like, your high school years, early teens, late teens, in your 20s, boo, early 20s. You look like you're damn near middle 25s-ish, going to your 30. When do we learn, boo? When? And, and pretty much, this is where she's like, she wants to get married when he come out. And that's when I say I'm getting a lot of Chevelle and Quaylen vibe. Because girl, this is about to be a disaster and you're about to humiliate yourself and not only yourself, your family and traumatize them again 
for bringing your ass on this show with Ray. But we'll discuss you again in the next episode. So to the next couple. Lord have mercy, we meet Rachel and Doug. Rachel's 35, Doug is 28. Honey, hot mess, okay? So pretty much Rachel and Doug, um, this is gonna this is gonna be a messy situation, I really do believe. It, I really hope it works out, cause woo. It starts off with Rachel talking to a young man who we learn later in the scene that this is Doug's son. Doug and Rachel, if I'm not mistaken, has gotten married and now she has custody of her son because the son's mother is a drug addict and Doug is in jail. So she went ahead and took the responsibility of taking him in. We learned that she was in the Marines for four years. So she is a Marine, an ex-Marine, and she has a thing for bad boys. Why? I don't know, but it's really creepy if you ask me. Only because this woman had been with three men, three convicts. And was married to one of them and now I believe she's either talking about marrying and then she goes and marry this one who is Doug after four months because he said she was his girl crazy is crazy let's just call it what it is she's even aware that she makes bad decisions this is the part that blew me like girl you know you make bad decisions you know you pick bad men but you can't help it because you like it rough it don't help that the chick bought a nine pound of bologna. That's, girl, he likes bologna that much. Like, it's just a weird, you done took on this man's child and you just got out of a marriage with another ex-convict, you with another convict. Girl, like, I do you have a death wish? Because that's what it seems like to me. So we learned that he's in jail for having a firearm and he's done 11 years for a drive-by. He definitely have done drive-bys and i'm like really girl that tells you right there he has like a violent streak okay selling drugs is bad enough right robbing people is bad enough but girl drive-bys how do we don't know he got bodies on him girl you you doing too much and then based off her talking to him on the phone he seemed very hostile and very aggressive okay and very controlling and she says she likes it and i don't understand why she's okay with a man talking to her but she likes it it turns her on me personally i think the girl got a death wish but we'll find out okay in this scene we find that doug calls rachel doug calls rachel and he asked did she speak to his po and she hasn't yet and this is when we started to learn some of doug's personality because he becomes very aggressive and nasty over the phone where he is now telling her she needs to get on it you know, she's effing up. What is you doing? This is what I'm talking about. And he's, she's just like, I know, I know. <laughs> and she likes it. She says she's actually likes the controlling and the, just the, the nastiness that come from him. And that just leads me to think like, girl, did you ever have a daddy? Like, I'm, I'm trying to understand. And if you did, was he like this? And you think all men should be like this? Because no woman, girl, look, I didn't get into it, but we won't. So then she go ahead to discuss about their, his son Doug and how she's babying him. And if she was to stop, he would be off the games. He's not even supposed to keep playing on the games because we learn that um, he's not supposed to be playing on video games. He is. And when she goes to speak to Doug, uh, I believe it's Doug Jr., uh, they go. she goes to ask some questions like, what would you do when your dad get out? And his answer, his response was pretty much punch him in the stomach for being a horrible dad and not being here to raise me, but then give him a hug. And I'm like, ooh, so he's got some of that aggression too. But it's really sad because he has a mom that's on drugs and a dad that's been incarcerated for 11 freaking years. So that means he's missed out on his whole boy's childhood pretty much. And you could just tell that, honey, this is, I'm telling y'all, this is gonna be, a, this is gonna be a ride. Then we move on to Courtney and Josh. Courtney is 30, Josh is 29. Now, this is the kicker about these two. Miss Courtney was a correction lieutenant at Josh's jail. And she one day raided his cell and found some letters about how alone he was. And she just fell in love and felt so bad. So, next thing you know, these two just fall madly in love. This chick had the audacity to be visiting him in different wigs, honey. And not just like disguising wigs, honey, like bad wigs, cheap wigs. On top of that, this is my question. This is my question. What kind of co-workers did you have 
that they saw your ass walk up in that jail with them different wigs on like they didn't know it was you. The girl they had no makeup, no lashes, no mask, no disguise, no nothing. She ain't dressed different. This girl walked up there with her bare everyday face with a sorry ass wig and they really said, unless somebody, one of her co-workers knew it was her and was sliding, letting her slide in, they some dummies. And I don't understand how people not escaping that jail because I don't know how y'all let that one go. So after she finds these letters, six months after talking, they get married. Six months. Six months, honey. And <laughs> now they're pretty much married. But here's the kicker. The girl get discovered, get caught. She said she knew it was a law where you could not be intimate with the inmates, but she didn't know it was a law law to where you could do time. So Miss Chick ended up doing 60 days in jail, and now she got to serve two years probation. That's not even the, the biggest part of it. The biggest part is they can't be together when he get out. He is going to be able to quarantine with her for 14 days and then he has to live with someone else because guess what? She's a felon, he's a felon. Girl, what did you think? Mm. So we learn that Josh is on parole for three years. So for three years, they cannot be together. But let Miss Courtney tell you Oh, they're going to be together. So that means her ass is about to do more time if she keeps this up. And the way she acting, it's going to happen. So then it ends with these two where Josh is being released in one day. She goes to the jail and she's going to pick him up. But she can't go on jail grounds. So she has a friend goes, drop her off by the jail. And this heifer puts on a pickle costume. Pickle. Because they have an inside joke, some kind of comic that's saying um, I'm kind of a big deal, like a deal pick up girl. Look, mm. you know, it can be cute in so many ways, but it's just like I, we let me tell you something. We found some some good ones, honey, because this 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 batch takes the cake. Out of all the other ones, this batch takes the cake because they they over the top, okay. So then we also learn that she spent twenty five G's. Where is these people getting this money from? You got Deontay spending twenty thirty thou, and now you got her spending twenty five thou. If I'm not mistaken, I think Courtney spent a couple thou on Josh too. Me personally, I just think it's very insane. But if you got it, I guess you spent it on commissary. I, look, they was living the life up in jail, honey. Let me tell you that, cause who? Like I, I don't get it. I mean, it was so to the point where this girl hot water heater went out in the winter time, and she did not pay to get it fixed because she made sure he had money on his books. <sighs> you know, it took me to get to this age in my thirties to realize that saying when Forrest Gump says "stupid is" is "stupid does." Yeah, sis, stupid. But she ain't the only one. But sis, stupid. Okay. So then we leave off with them where she's hiding on the ground in this cheap ass pickle costume waiting on him. And then it pretty much goes and that's how episode one. So now we go to our next couple who is Stan and Lisa. Stan is 65. Lisa is 39. So we learn that <laughs> honey with Stan, you know, he comes off like a really sweet man. He looks like he's lonely and he's like he's settling but Stan goes right off talking about he's a millionaire. He's worth $2.3 million. Now, let me say something. If it's gotten to the point where a millionaire, millionaire that worth $2.3 is now pretty much settling for someone who's like Lisa. I'm not judging. I'm just saying. What does that say for the rest of us, okay? You're 2.3 and this is what you... The heart's what the heart, the heart wants what the heart wants, I guess. So he's at a basketball, um, a baseball cage, and he's with his friends, and he's telling them how, like, you know, when Lisa get out, and, you know, they're going to live this life, and his friends are really not feeling it, because they're like, mm, she could be pretty much scamming you. And he's like, no, we learned that they actually dated prior to her going to jail three times, and then she disappeared on them. Uh, they were intimate. And to find out, she was locked up for drugs, okay? And so, he didn't know. He found out later on. And since then, he's been putting money on her books. He's been taking care of her. Um, I love how the friends called her healthy when he showed the pictures, honey. Like, that's the old school thing, healthy. That's another word for, she's a little plump girl. She's, she's a little thick, okay? A little healthy, all right? She's a big girl, a little meaty, you know? And um, then we get a call from Lisa while she's there. And he has her on speakerphone. 
and she's just like I'm so nervous I'm scared that you're not going to be attracted to me because I look like my brother and the silence that went on baby I fell out I said oh my god like the friends even Stan was like cricket cricket I said baby mm -mm. this is going to be a mess this is going to be a hot tamale mess okay so pretty much that's how the show ended these are our couples um you could tell this is going to be a crazy season already and i'm all here for it so i want to say thank you so much loves for sticking through watching this review i'm going to go ahead and get to episode two get that down for you but till then don't forget to like comment subscribe let a sister know you know all about how you feel about this show and until then smooches